So we're making our half square triangles here. Next, we cut these in half. You can use a rotary cutter or your scissors. And one of the things I can tell you um, with the number of half square triangles and whatnot we have in this, one of my favorite things to do is use a ruler the right size um, make sure you have the diagonal on your diagonal and then trim accordingly. Um, and this gets rid of all the tails. Um, I always size things a little large because, well, I happen to cut much better than I sew. So we're going to turn this around then just so that my arms aren't at an awkward angle. And you can see I'm keeping that on there. And you want to keep a firm hold on these so they don't slip and slide on you. Okay, we're on to our next step. Um, now we are making quarter square triangles. Earlier we made our lovely half square triangles. Now we're going to make some quarter square triangles. Um, if you haven't made them before, they start out much like your half square triangles. Um, so we're going to uh, kind of sew these together really quickly. Um, and then we'll show you the trick for turning them into quarter squares. Okay, so we've sewn on both sides here of our drawn line. We're gonna cut these in half, and then just like we did earlier, we're gonna press these so that the seam is to the dark side. Um, and that will, uh, actually we're going to press it toward, so it's towards this color, which is called blizzard. Um, we're gonna make both sides, blizzard sides work for us here. Okay, and I'll be right back. All right, so right now we have two sets, um, two of each of these as far as our half square triangles go. You can trim the, this point, in fact, in the instructions I put it there, because some people like to trim it each step. I'm going to skip that step here because it's not really necessary. So I'm going to put these two together. Okay, now you know I pressed both seams towards this pink, this blizzard color, um, just to make sure that they nest nicely. Um, and I start my things and tend to press them in between. If you starch them, you don't necessarily need to press them. You can finger press them instead of uh, press them with some heat. But what we're going to do now is we are going to mark I'm going to do this on the light side because it'll show up a little bit better. We are going to take and mark across here perpendicular to our seam. Okay. Um, I'm not a fan of fricks on pens. This is about the only time I think they work well um, is when marking seams like this. Okay. And we're going to sew on either side of that. And once we sew on either side of that, we'll cut it apart and trim it. And if I did this right, voila, we have our quarter square triangle. One trick with these, as we pull them out, one of the things we're gonna do is press these. Um, but in the back here, what you can do to make these lay a little flatter is you can do something we call spin the seam. So you pull this part like this and press it down, okay? And that will spin your seam and then you can press this in place. So this lays a lot flatter than if you don't do this. So as you saw, just give the little seam a little tug 
and you can flatten those pieces like that. Okay, we're on to our last set of units for our Polaris block. And what we have here, um, I've got my little square here, and we're gonna do some stitch and flip. Um, whenever I have these kind of awkward shapes, stitch and flip to me is the easiest way to manage them. So stitch and flip, you start with uh, two equally sized, as far as the width goes here. And I'm going to sew on the line here, okay? And when you do so on the line here, the one thing you want to make sure of is that you're very, 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 very careful with um, your directions. So, you know, make sure you, you note your orientation before you get, go crazy and start sewing because there's nothing worse than knowing you got it the wrong way. So in this case, we want them both going toward each other. Do it again. And it works best if you sew just inside the line, meaning uh, just to this side of the line. Um, so that way when you flip it out, it should come out correctly. Um, good news is if you're following this as a block of the month, we have uh, been a little generous with some of our cuts to make this possible. Now, the next step I do is I flip it out here to make sure that I'm going to come square. Okay, and what you'll see here is that I'm, I'm, I'm not quite as square as I'd like to be on this one. Um, and this is the one that I did right on the line. So I'm going to come back through just so you guys see this, just because I know everybody makes this mistake. And I'm going to trim it a little bit here. Second one just inside the first one. Okay. And then that should, when I rip the original line out, and I may have to come a little closer, should be better. This one, I put the line kind of on the inside here. And when I fold it back, it worked out perfectly because I put it just inside the line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this extra excess fabric here. Okay, so we've done our test. We folded these back. They look good. Now we flip them back over. We take our handy dandy ruler here and we put it on our seam line and we kind of trim the excess off. So you'll end up with a little bit of a purple piece and a little bit of a bluish piece. Okay, now you want to make sure you're, that's why we always flip these to begin with, to make sure that, yeah, it's right where I think I want it. Um, no sense in wasting fabric. Um, oops. Sometimes my rotary cutter and I don't get along. There we go. So now we can flip this open, like so. And as you can see, we'll press this um, and make sure it has a nice little dash of starch on it. And we'll make four of these. So our next step in this is to make a lovely nine patch. Now, when you make your nine patches, make sure that you are being very, very, very careful with um, the directions of your blue pieces here, um, because those are very important. So first thing we're gonna do here is make our star. Okay, and we're making sure that we've got everything kind of aligned to the right way. So that uh, our pieces will go together well. Uh, the beauty of batiks is there's kind of a right way and a wrong way. Um, one side will be a little bit fainter than the other, um, so it's not a huge difference. Okay, and now we're going to come back to the other side here and put these other pieces on make our nine patch. Okay, this will make the center of the Polaris block. And you'll note I'm being very careful with my organizations here. And so piece 
here. And this will be our beginnings of our nine patch that we'll sew together. But I am going to, um, we're going to finger press everything together, so to speak. Okay, so what we should see now is that we have our blocks like so. Okay, and now we're going to flip these over and Okay, I try to nest my seams here. Um, and I don't um, tend to press them ahead of time because it's easier to feel them together, um, if that makes any sense. And we're gonna do this next one. And then we'll work on the next side. Now some people will pin all these I um, I just go kind of by feel here. As long as my seams are straight, we'll be good. So there's the first one. And see that worked out nicely. And then now we're gonna put the second one on here. And again, nesting our seams. You can feel those right there. So they should nest together. Align your corners and move from there. Now you'll note when I put my needle down, I tend to put it down a little bit in from the corner to avoid the biting, um, which sometimes happens. And when I aim here, one of the things I try to do is aim right for that point there. And that helps keep my um, points pretty um, on this. So let's do it again. And again, we're going to aim for that cross spot here. Sometimes you have to lift your presser foot to get the, get it right. And then I tend to hold down the edge here um, just to make sure that it doesn't slip. Okay. And with this, we have our nine patch. Now, Okay, everybody, we are on our last segment here of our lovely little block, um, in which case we're going to, again, it's kind of a, this is an uneven nine patch, if you think about it that way. We've made our lovely star center here, and now we're going to add uh, these kind of wedges to the outside to make the middle row, and then we're going to make the outer row here. And again, we're going to put these together. If you feel more comfortable, um, taking and um, pinning these or clipping these. Do what makes you comfortable. Just make sure you keep your corners, you know, tight. And that's what I always do is kind of put my fingernail on them here. We have our edges and we have our center. And again, I am going to, just as I said earlier, um, I'm going to make sure that I press these. So this is one of those where you're gonna press these in, press those out, and we're going to finger press these because again, it works a little bit better um, if we hold those that way. Okay, this one. Okay, so now we're going to take these and we're going to kind of finger press these together, uh, making sure that you, you've got your seams going opposite directions as you nest them. And we're gonna make sure our tops align here so that we have some pretty seams. And 
I tend to hold on to that nesting pretty tightly until I get to it. And then I go to the next nesting and hold on to it pretty tightly as well, um, making sure that you know we keep the if we keep it taut. Um, we'll keep a, a nice line here. And when you get to where you're gonna mow over a seam here, I tend to lift my presser foot to make it lay flat. One of those little tricks. Um, and then hold that point there. Now on to the other side uh, because you'll see this side see those nice matched points there um, so we're gonna do this next side and then we'll trim her up and our first block Polaris will be done